Hey guys, in today's video we will be discussing the rise of Josh Jacobs and the dark but motivational story as well. And we will go into all the promising traits that Josh Jacobs has and who he compares to. Alabama, to no one's surprise, has had their fair share of running backs that transition into the NFL. And for this next point, I'm only going to use modern day running backs. Some notable running backs that came out of Alabama were the 2005 NFL MVP, Sean Alexander, Mark Ingram, Derrick Henry, Trent Richardson, and Eddie Lacy. Now obviously, the last two I just mentioned didn't transition well into the NFL, but they were still hyped up pretty well. I went back and looked at what is the preferred player traits by NFL scouts based on what running backs have the most success in the NFL, given their height slash weight slash 40 time. And typically, a running back who runs anywhere between a 4.4 and a 4.5 have the most success in the NFL. And the ideal height for an elite running back is anywhere from 5'10 to 6 feet, and weighs anywhere from 215 pounds to 225. In the combine comparisons you are about to see, it's like a traffic light. Green means go, but in this case it means good, and red means stop, or in this case bad. And yellow is just being cautious. As you can see, Trent Richardson has a few cautious traits, but has the best 40 time out of all these guys. For Derrick Henry, despite winning the Heisman, scouts had three big red flags on him. His height, his weight, and the fact he wasn't the best receiving back. And those were the only reasons he fell all the way to the second round. Ingram, as you can see, just had a slight 40 problem. Eddie Lacy, believe it or not, didn't have a weight problem during the combine. He just ran a super slow 40 for a running back. Sean Alexander just didn't run a preferred 40. And for Jacobs, here's where scouts got worried. Despite having the ideal height and weight, Jacobs had a slow 40 at just a 4.6, but Jacobs still did go in the first round. Now that stuff I just mentioned doesn't determine a good player. It's just the first things that appear on a player's scouting profile. Grit and determination with a mix of hard work determines the player. Well, at least that's the most motivational thing that I could think of to say. Josh Jacobs grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and for most of Jacobs' life, his mother wouldn't be around, but his father Marty would play both roles once he got full custody of Jacobs and his four siblings. As if this story isn't already dark, it gets darker from here. Jacobs lived most of his childhood in poverty. There were times where Jacobs and his family would live in their family car. Thankfully, the sport of football would step in and save Josh Jacobs' life. But don't take my words for it. Josh Jacobs would go on to say, and I quote, I think football really saved my life, honestly. It changed my life because it gave me an outlet. Josh Jacobs struggled to gain media and newspaper attention despite averaging 15 yards a carry in high school. Thankfully for Jacobs, he had good friends who shared his highlights all throughout social media. Nick Saban eventually stepped in and the rest would be up to Jacobs to prove he was as good as his stats said. Josh Jacobs never put up godly stats in college, but there is no denying his athletic ability and his toughness. However, scouts were concerned with his vision and the fact that he was used as a third down back. The Raiders believed in Jacobs and they needed a power horse at running back, so they took a chance on him with the 24th pick. And so far, it's looking like it paid off because Josh Jacobs broke Hall of Famer Marcus Allen's single season rookie Raider rushing record by 459 yards, and he averaged 0.4 more yards per carry than Marcus Allen. And if you ask me, he got robbed of Offensive Rookie of the Year. I cannot believe Kyler Murray won it over him. Already in his second year, Jacobs is fourth in rushing yards and tied for third in rushing touchdowns. And that's pretty impressive, considering the tough run defenses the Raiders have to play in the 2020 season. Hall of Famer Jim Brown once said this about also Hall of Famer Walter Payton. It was the first time I saw him on television. I didn't know who he was. And I saw him make this one run. He fought through the inch. He must have twisted and knocked three or four guys over, spun around, accelerated. 
And I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> what kind of animal is this? The first time I ever watched Josh Jacobs play in the NFL, it was preseason week two. I know it's just preseason, but damn, look at him fight for every yard, and look at the decision making on these cuts. He doesn't even feel like a rookie. I know I'm not a Hall of Famer like Jim Brown, but I'm sure a Hall of Famer would have said the exact same thing. This isn't just the only play either. Take a look at this one. The Packers are in a cover one. Jacobs continuously makes great cuts for a guy with quote unquote poor vision. Not only does he have great between the tackle vision, but he has amazing open field vision as well. If it weren't for that safety help, this play is likely a touchdown. If I had to compare him to someone, honestly, to me, he looks a little like prime Maurice Jones Drew. You know, the Jaguar version, not the Raider one. But that's just my opinion. This story just goes to show you that great things do happen to the less fortunate people, and stats are not everything in determining a good player. Josh Jacobs went from living in a car with his brothers and sisters to buying his own dad a house. This is truly an amazing story, but it's only just beginning. Huge shout out to Caps for the Cup for the idea of this video. He said, I want you to cover Josh Jacobs. I heard stories about his childhood and you had good analysis on Thielen's background in the Thielen video. I think it would be pretty entertaining. Well, it was fun to make and thank you Caps for the Cup for the idea.